Good job, ladies. Thank you. with that sun.
Finish line? Please welcome East Hampton Town Post 419, Color Guard, for the presentation of the colors. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, indivisible in liberty and, and justice for all. For all. Glenn Rousey will now sing the national anthem. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we won. So gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare The bombs bursting in air Gave proof through the night That our flag was still this brief but on on behalf of the Wounded Warrior Project thanks everyone for coming out got some people we got to thank first and foremost our wounded soldiers who are here today for their service and their sacrifice we're, jo we're joined today by six soldiers who served in Iraq and Afghanistan with the British Army and six uh, Israeli Defense Forces soldiers who are biking with us, so we welcome them as well. We've got over a thousand riders today. We've raised over two hundred and twenty thousand dollars, so thanks very, very much. The following fire departments: Amagansett, Sag Harbor, East Hampton, Springs, and Montauk. The Freedom Flying Memorial. Chief Tom Fabiano and the Sag Harbor Police Chief Eddie Ecker and the East Hampton Town Police. Eric Malecki and the Boys and Girl Scouts. GT Power Systems. We have here the um, Town Supervisor Bill Wilkinson and the Town Board. Thanks for all their help in putting this together. 
village of Sag Harbor, Sag Harbor and Amagansett American Legions, Sag Harbor and East Hampton VFWs, Vicky's Veggie, Ellen and Jim Girardi, the mayor of the village of East Hampton, Paul Rickenback, our host, the Principe family, who has given us this wonderful site to launch our ride from. Big shout out to the Marines of 1-9, Jordan Herder's unit. Village of North Haven and the town of Southampton. American Legion Post 924, Vietnam Veteran Riders, Red Knights, Chapter 25, the Leathernecks of New York. I want to thank all the volunteers who labored to make this event possible, especially former U.S. Army Command Sergeant Major Walter Noller. Fitness, for those of you who don't know, Chris has logged over 9,000 miles cycling for Soldier Ride, biked across the country twice when we started this thing back in Amagansett in 2004. And I'm going to thank one team, BGCB, Huntley Garriott and, and Tim Bowler, who raised over $65,000. And finally, I want to thank everyone I forgot to thank. Please welcome a wounded warrior and hero from my generation's conflict, the Vietnam War, who served to protect our freedom, the Honorable John Bean. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good morning, my fellow EastEnders. Yeah. Good morning, John. You know... When I was asked to come here today, of course I come here all the time, in every event, I started thinking about what the heck are they inviting me for? And then I realized that I have a lot in common with these uh, wounded warriors of today. I served as a <clears throat> United States Marine, and you have to remember, when I was in the Marines, I was six foot two and weighed 215 pounds. Well, now I'm like four foot two, and I still weigh 215 pounds. <laughs> well, I'm trying to keep that thing going. But when I was uh, recuperating at the Philadelphia Naval Hospital, one of my sisters brought me a tennis ball. Just so I could get my arm strong. Well, that tennis ball turned into a basketball, and I started shooting baskets at the Philadelphia Naval Hospital. You know, we all know, although I didn't know then, but life's not very fair. <clears throat> we all get in fights sometime, and not many of us, but all the wounded warriors and myself, we get knocked down. It doesn't make any difference of how or where you got knocked down. What makes the difference is what you do when you get back up. <laughs> so my uh, little tennis ball for my sister got me in the direction of wheelchair athletics. I came home to Long Island and found out there was actually a wheelchair basketball selection. And at the school of uh, the Boulevard Watchers in Queens in New York, Ben Lipton, the chairman, hosted wheelchair events. So I commuted weekly from Montauk to right by the, uh, the airport in Queens at LaGuardia at the Ben Lipton School. And from there, I went on to become a member of the United States Wheelchair Paralympic Team. I went to Peru and competed in the discus, the shot put, and javelin. And I came home with gold medals and all. And in 1976, for the first time ever, the Paralympics finally recognized that amputees were disabled enough to participate in the Paralympics. So I was selected as the, as the captain of the amputee team and went to Toronto, uh, Canada for the games and they came home with a gold, a silver, and a bronze in the discus of Chopin Down. Well, like I said earlier, it doesn't matter how or where you got knocked down. It matters of what you do 
when you get back up. And our wounded warriors are here today to prove that they got back up. We not only love them for what they've done for us and our country, we salute them for being here today, getting on a hot, sticky, damp road, and doing what it takes to continue to be a proud American. We salute you. God bless and have a great ride. Justin Constantine. Justin's a new board member of the Wounded Warrior Project and a wounded warrior. Thank you, and uh, what a hard act to follow. I haven't won a gold medal in anything, so. <laughs> uh, this is my first soldier ride. I'm, I live down, my wife and I live down in Virginia, so I'm thrilled. My first one's up here. I'm overwhelmed with emotion right now, looking at the amazing community support the Wounded Warrior Project has with your awesome community. Thousands of, or over a thousand people are riding us phenomenal. And I'll tell you, just seeing, uh, I've been obviously a number of Wounded Warrior Project events for the last few years, and what really keeps us going and keeps the Wounded Warriors going the people like you who, across America, who remind us that you remember who we are. You haven't forgotten about the sacrifices we've made and the sacrifices that folks like Jordan have made who unfortunately didn't make it back. And, you know, this rise about Jordan and, and other, um, the other Wounded Warriors as well. I never met Jordan, probably a lot of you haven't either, but I know during the whole ride today, I was thinking about him. Just like everyone else who's deployed to Iraq or Afghanistan, and probably a lot of you as well, we all know people who haven't made it back. And so it's events like this that celebrate their total sacrifice that they made for this country that really keeps us going. And I'll say a lot of that started with the Vietnam vets as well. There's no way 30 or 40 years ago we would have had something like this with America supporting our Wounded Warriors. So I just want to again commend all of you for all the money you've donated to the Wounded Warrior Project for this. The Wounded Warrior Project's doing amazing things things for recovering warriors and just as importantly for their caregivers from coast to coast. So I'm thrilled to be here. I'm going to have a great ride. I hope I get a chance to talk to some of you folks during that ride. Thank you so much. Chris Carney. Chris is going to give some riding instructions. I'm going to have the blessing and get the ride started. Thanks very much. Thanks, thanks again, everybody. Um, so honored, just real quick, to, to be here and, and to be in front of all of you and in front of our Wounded Warriors and Mr. Behan up here. Uh, we'll get started here. The, the rules of the road. We've been doing this for a couple years, a lot of you know. The soldiers are going to lead the way. What's so special about this ride is you are actually participating in their recovery right now by, by following them. Uh, the pace is going to be slow. It's going to be hot. Uh, we ask that you all stay behind the soldiers. If uh, w the hand cyclists move a little bit slower, they pick up speed on the downhills, the uphills are tremendously uh, tough. Um, because they're in hand cycles, it's also, they sit real low to the road. It's twice as hot for them. So please be patient on the way to Sag Harbor. We're following the soldiers. We're participating in their recovery. And uh, once we get to Sag Harbor, we'll have a ceremony. You'll have a chance to get off your bikes, get some water. Um, there'll be a couple speeches there. When we leave Sag Harbor, it's a chance to open it up. For all the jackrabbits, everyone who's all pumped up, when we leave Sag Harbor, the vibe is so emotional because you're leaving there. The goosebumps are pumped. You can take off. Um, uh, but we just ask on the way to Sag Harbor, please stay behind the soldiers, respect what they're doing, and be patient. Thank you all so much for showing your love and being here. Thank you. Uh, also, sorry, um, there, I don't know if everyone's heard this or not, but uh, because of what happened yesterday in Babylon, because of the Weather Service's heat advisory, there is no support for the 60-mile ride. We are officially not doing the 60-mile ride. Sorry, a lot of you I know are disappointed. A lot of you have trained for it. If We can't tell you not to do it, but we are not sanctioning the 60-mile ride. Please, uh, if you do do it, use extreme caution. It's really, really hot. Uh, I advise only experienced cyclists go out and try it. If, if you're, you're pumped up for the event and you trained for it and you've never really ridden before, let, 
tackle it next year. Uh, all right, but thank you very much for showing your support. We hope uh, nobody's too disappointed about the 60, and uh, we'll be on the road shortly. Thank you. Yeah. Well, my friends, I had the distinct privilege and yet difficult challenge of officiating at the funeral of Lance Corporal Jordan Herter. And it was wonderful to see the community support on that day. It's wonderful to see the community support this day as we continue to honor Jordan as well as all the wounded warriors present. I'd like to recognize that Jordan's father, Chris, is with us today. And Chris, we continue to thank you for your family sacrifice. Well, let us pray. Gracious God, we give you the thanks of our hearts for brave men and women who have been willing to lay their lives on the line for our country and for the promotion of democracy around this world. We thank you for Jordan and other warriors who were not able to return home. And we ask that you would continue to support their families and their mourning and continue to instill in us a great gratitude for their devotion and their gift of their lives. We thank you for the wounded soldiers here today. We pray that you would continue to let them feel our gratitude, continue to support them in their healing, and particularly, let them know that this East End community supports and loves them, and let them feel that as they ride through this lovely area. We pray for all who are riding this day, keep them safe, give them cool breezes, and let them just feel the wonder of what they're doing on behalf of our soldiers, marines, airmen, and sailors. And finally, O oh God, we pray that you would hasten that day when peace would cover the face of this earth and no other young man or woman would have to take up arms. But we pray that until that day, our, those who do will be kept safe as they defend those liberties that we hold so dear. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I guess somebody's supposed to say, let the ride begin! <laughs> Hey, you're looking cute, man. 
Back again. You too. Go get him, man. Oh, this looks treacherous. This looks treacherous. I'm coming across. Okay, follow the flag. Good, good. guys doing? Good, how you doing? Sandy, good. That's a lot of bicycles, man. Way to go, brother. Woo! Yeah, baby. Hey, guys. Hey, Elizabeth. Go get him, girl. Hey, Kevin. Hey, hey. Oh, there's a breeze. A breeze. It's maybe all these bicycles making that breeze. Hello. 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 Good. Hey, how you doing? How are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm fine. My I'm boys fine. just did six miles. Oh, sweet. Hi, girls. How are you girls doing? You seeing the soldiers? Hi, Daddy. Is Daddy riding a bike? No, he's working today. Uh, Mm, wow, exciting. Yeah, it was a, a, a huge crowd, thousand bikes. Nice. Thank you. Woo! Yay! Yay! We all can't wait for the water. Yeah, yeah. We all can't wait for the water. Woo! Yes. <laughs> I would like that. Oh, hi! 
eat? I'll stuff the ballot box, okay? Montauk, Star Island. Star Whoa. Island Yacht Club. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, come visit. They said they've got to go to Stag Harbor to pick them up. I said, what's in all those boxes? What this happened to the, box, to the bus that was supposed to take them down? USA! Yes, USA! Yes. Wounded Warrior Pride! Bring <laughs> to New York! Good job, thank you. There you go. Thank you.
to the Sag Harbor. Beautiful day. If you'd like to start the tribute ceremony with the Reverend Mark Phillips from the First Presbyterian Church in Sag Harbor. Let us pray. Our good and our gracious God, we thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for the warmth and for the brightness that we feel and see. We thank you for the sense of community that we experience as we are together. We pray for your continued blessing to be upon us today as we continue to ride and as we continue to remember. As we continue to ride and remember, we pray and we offer you our thanks for all those who have laid down their lives for their friends. We remember with gratitude Jordan and the countless others. And we pray for those who continue to serve your, our country today, wherever they might be. We pray your blessing upon them and that you would keep them safe. And we remember the families and loved ones of those who are here who wait for their return. Most of all, we pray that today we might renew our commitment, that we might renew our commitment to do whatever we can for the cause of peace and justice for all. We pray that our efforts here might be a step in, one step in the direction that from sea to shining sea in this world, your reign might be known, and indeed there might be peace for all people. So we offer you our thanks and pray for your continued blessing. In Christ's name, amen. We have a helicopter going to visit us. My name is Joanne Lyles. I'm the forever proud mom of Lance Corporal Jordan Herder, United States Marine. We are in the company of heroes. I hope tonight, as your head hits the pillow, you will take just a minute to thank God for that small percentage of the population who have chosen to defend us who have taken the oath, who continue to serve in places we can't pronounce or find on a map. We sleep under the blanket of freedom because members of this generation have decided this nation and our way of life is worth preserving. for your support and your commitment to Soldier Ride the Hamptons 2011 and the wounded warriors that we serve.
accept this humble plea. We all agree it's fair. We thank you for your sacrifice. Our hearts now hold in prayer for your love. recipient receiving the Purple Heart in the same incident that took Jordan's life. First of all, I want to thank everyone for coming out here. We really appreciate it. Y'all, your support. And now they asked me to speak about Jordan. I said, that's easy. And I had the privilege of serving with him as his team leader. And he was an easy-going Marine. He always did what he was told. He was rarely late. Every now and then we met. We we joked with him, but you know he had a dry sense of humor. So it was like, haha. Uh -huh. uh. <laughs> but on uh, April 22nd, 2008, A.R. Ramadi, my life was saved by the actions, all the extraordinary actions of Jordan, and that's why Sack Harbor holds a special place in my heart. Because without him, I wouldn't be here. You know, and I wouldn't be here talking to you good people on this ride. And he saved my life, and I live every day to the fullest now in his honor. So if you know you lost someone, ride hard, live free, and in honor of my brother, Nicholas George Xaros, live the dream. Yeah. Next, we'd like to introduce Peter Ownercamp, um, Wounded Warrior Project. Peter! Peter! 
First, I'd just like to uh, present Joanne with this plaque from the Wounded Warrior Project for Rural and her help. I know it's hot out there, and I have something to, to read that's going to take a few minutes, but it's worth it. What follows are excer excerpts from remarks by Marine Lieutenant General John F. Kelly to the Semper Fi Society of St. Louis on November 13th. Kelly's son, Marine First Lieutenant Robert Michael Kelly, 29, had been killed in action four days earlier in Sangin in southern Afghanistan while leading his platoon on a combat patrol. Those with less a sense of service to the nation never understand that when men and women of character step forward to look danger and adversity straight in the eye, refusing to blink or give ground even to their own deaths. No, they are not victims, but they are warriors. You are warriors, and warriors are never victims regardless of how and where they fall. Death or fear of death has no power on over them. Their paths are paved by sacrifice, and sacrifices they gladly make for you. Two years ago, when I was commander of all U.S. and Iraqi forces, in fact, the 22nd of April, 2008, two Marine infantry battalions, the 1-9, the Walking Dead, and the 2-8, were switching out in Ramadi. Two Marines, Corporal Jonathan Yale and Lance Corporal Jonathan Herder, 20 and 20 year, 22 and 20 years old, respectively, one from each battalion, were assuming the watch together at the entrance gate of an outpost that contained a makeshift barracks housing 50 Marines. Yale was a dirt poor, mixed race kid from Virginia with a wife and a daughter and a mother and sister who lived with him. And he supported as well. He did this on a yearly salary of less than 23,000. Herder, on the other hand, was a middle class white kid from Long Island. They were both from two completely different worlds, but they were Marines, combat Marines forged in the same crucible of Marine training. And because of this bond, they were brothers as close or closer than if they were born of the same woman. The mission orders they received from the sergeant squad leader, I'm sure, went something like this. Okay, you two clowns, stand this post and let no unauthorized personnel or vehicles pass. You clear? I'm sure Yale and Herder then rolled their eyes and said in unison something like, yes, sergeant, with just enough attitude that made the point without saying the words. No kidding, sweetheart, we know what we're doing. They then relieved two other Marines on watch and took up their post at the entry control point of Joint Security Station Nasser in the Safiya section of Ramadi, Al Ambar, Iraq. A few minutes later, a large blue truck turned down the alley, perhaps 60 to 70 yards in length, and sped its way through the serpentine of concrete Jersey walls. The truck shot just short of where the two were posted and detonated, killing them both catastrophically. 24 brick masonry houses were damaged or destroyed. A mosque 100 yards away collapsed. The truck's engine came to rest 200 yards away, knocking most of the house down before it stopped. Our explosive experts reckoned the blast was made of 2,000 pounds of explosives. Two died, and because these two young infantrymen didn't have it in their DNA to run from danger, they saved the lives of 150 of their Iraqi and American men in arms, brothers in arms. What we didn't know at the time, and I learned only a couple days later, after I wrote a summary and submitted both Yale and Herder for posthumous Navy crosses, was that one of our security cameras, da damaged initially in the blast, recorded some of the suicide attack. It happened exactly as the Iraqi policemen on the scene had described it. It took exactly six seconds from when the truck entered the alley until it detonated. You can watch the last six seconds of their young lives. Putting myself in their heads, I suppose it took about a second for the two Marines to separately come to the same conclusion about what was going on once the truck came into their view at the far end of the alley. Exactly no time to talk it over or call the sergeant to ask what to do. Only enough time to take half an instant. And, and remember, let no unauthorized personnel or vehicles pass. The two Marines had about five seconds left to live. It took maybe another two seconds for them to present their weapons, take aim, and open up. By this time, the truck was halfway through the barriers and gaining speed the whole time. Here the recording shows a number of Iraqi police, some of whom had fired their AKs, now scattering like the normal and rational men they were. Some running right past the Marines. They had three seconds to live. For about two seconds more, the recording shows the Marines' weapons firing nonstop, the truck's windshield exploding into shards of glass as their, as their rounds take it apart and tore into the body of the son of a bitch who's trying to get past them to kill their brothers, American and Iraqi, 
bedded down in the barracks, totally unaware of the fact that their lives at that moment depended entirely on two Marines standing their ground. If they had been aware, they, they would have known they were safe because two Marines stood between them and a crazed suicide bomber. The recording shows the truck careening to a stop immediately in front of the two Marines. In all of the instantaneous violence, Yell and Herder never hesitated. By all reports and by the recording, they never stepped back. They never even started to step aside. They never shifted their weight. With their feet spread shoulder width apart, they leaned into the danger. Firing as they could fast as they could work their weapons, they had only one second to live. The truck explodes, the camera goes blank, two young men go to their God. Six seconds. Not enough time to think about their families, their country, their flag, or about their lives or their deaths. But more than enough time for two brave, very brave young men to do their duty into eternity. That is the kind of people who are on watch all over the world tonight for you. Okay. Looking good. It's looking good. Looking good. Looking sharp, man. Way to go. The soldiers are cutting it short, and the other people are, are they Going can back ride to if they want, but you know it's not part of the official ride. Right, 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 right. Yeah, the soldiers are quitting after the same bar. That's it. Right. Hey, cool, Captain. Hey. 
Look at this. Oh my god, a sea of bicycles. Look at you, man. You're looking good. Thank you. Welcome. Looking good. <laughs> I saw you before. Woo! <laughs> There's that guy hey, with that camera. Did they go past? <clears throat> Ending. Which one's your Let me, uh, let me get a picture of you ladies. Nice. One nine, one nine. <laughs> oh, I can add it. <laughs> hey, girls. <laughs> Are they, these are soldiers or these just said that? No, that's sunny species. Yeah. <laughs> well, nine. No, I think it's just the first group where the couple of Marines that yeah, went yeah. with the police yeah. escort. No, I just noticed the jersey. Yeah, that guy was a one nine. Yeah, the orange jerseys.
How are you guys doing? Living large. He said, Yeah, I think about the 